I am unashamed. What about you? For now, we'll just so, eat, we'll just eat like kings. Eat like kings. I believe I am a king. I will give that study on a podcast in a podcast near you. That's right. But I'm right now. I'm digging. One of the texts that you could use, which it is right. pretty enlightening, we are a royal. Oh, priesthood. Ooh, trust me, that, a... that I've already circled the word I figured you would. royal. <laughs> 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 that Revelation 1 6 is what got my attention. He has made you to be kings. So, in well, a, in it, started, all points, it started with the king of, well, that we were on the podcast that day, we, were talking, we yeah. were talking about the king of kings and the Lord of lords. That, that's what kind of got it, got it rolling for you. But nobody thinks we're kings because it doesn't fit with the narrative, but they didn't think Jesus was a king either. Right. He was like, are you a king? Ha ha. Yeah. He's like, yeah. Yeah, that's why I can't. I'm the king of kings. <laughs> He's like, well, let's kill you then. I mean, that—that's basically what they—they—they they, they crucified him because of insanity. He's claiming yeah. to be a king. Yeah. Well, now guess what? When I claim to be a king on earth, they do the same thing. They laugh and say, "Where's your can? Let me put some coins in it. <laughs> Go buy something." What was the true, true, true story? Wasn't there a? Then there used to be a king tobacco. Was it oh. King Albert? That's a cigar. Oh. Oh no, it's King Oscar. King Oscar. That's just that's yeah, the a king sorry. of fish. But in there, in there, a tobacco with king in the title. No, you're thinking about it. No. There's a cigar, I think, called a king something. That's what I was thinking. Not that I smoke cigars, <laughs> but I thought I, I remembered the joke is calling the store and saying, "Do you have King Arthur in a can?" You better let him out or something. I, I just I thought that just flashed into no, my brain. But, but anyway, I'm, I'm working. I'm sure one of our uh, audience members will. will I'm working on a sermon about we are kings. When I Googled it, I found zero. Nobody thinks that you're a king in Christ, or they haven't taken it to the computer. They haven't the asked way. about it. The, the only place there was, which was my point, which is the same deal. Y'all have heard my bit. I look at products who take spiritual principles and try to make money from that, even though they don't believe it. I've got, I have a list a mile long. I've told you about that. Oh, yeah. You know, Charmin forever. Yeah. Toilet paper that never runs out, but it does. So, and Especially we, during the coronavirus. Well, yeah, we saw that. So that whole deal about the eternal role was a lie. <laughs> So anyway, the only thing I saw about kings was humble kings and it's clothing, it's apparel, and they trademarked it because I wanted to write a book. I think I mentioned that. Mm -hmm. I said humble kings. Yeah. But nope, already trademarked. It's a clothing line. Now what's a clothing line? And it, it, it was like clothes that are like hip, you know. Uh, and so somehow or another you're a humble king. I don't get it. But it sounds good, and if you give them $40, they'll give you a shirt. <laughs> yeah. So yesterday I go over because I got a golf tournament next weekend and I haven't been playing much golf. So I did, and, and I'm here's my deal on golf. I'm kind of past the point. Once I hit fifty, I'm like my body just won't turn like it used to, and with that comes the frustration of, you know, you see a professional golfer like used to. I watch videos, then I go try to do it. When I try to do that, I'm immediately injured. <laughs> just trying to make the motion. It's just my body. That's your, that's your body preparing you for my age. Now it's 74. Yeah. It, it, it goes further down than it is now. Well, if you want to go get into traction, just make a full turn. <laughs> so, so dad's at the point where he reaches out to grab something quickly and like, I reach for my falling <laughs> shotgun and the bicep becomes and, a unicep and, and I did it quickly it was falling and to save anyone from getting hurt my left hand was right here my shotgun is on my right I just went very rapidly and caught it and when I did I said hey. so I looked and this yeah. is the result oh feel that is, oh that is so that's very hard for me to look at. I mean, I, I don't it's, know why you keep showing it. Well, I feel. Because when I see it myself, I said, that needs to be shown <laughs> on what not to do. Let the shotgun fall, grab it with the other arm. But if somebody told me I would make a movement well, that needs of to less be than two feet to yeah. grab something, and this would be the result. It turned purple, the blood <laughs> up in there. Then it turned yellowish, green, 
<laughs> yeah, like, it it's not color. funny. Why? Well, when you go do it eighty-seven <laughs> to ninety times on purpose yeah. with a club, and you're just oh, yeah. making that mo. I called a man who knew a doctor, and I and I and I, and I said, Dan, take a shot of this and give it I to this guy. Called a man who knew a so doctor. So the guy looked at my muscle, what was left of it, and I said, get a hold of some doctor that does this kind of work, and show him this picture and ask him what I need to do. So he calls him up, and the guy said, he said, I can fix it in about 20 minutes. It's about 20 minutes worth of surgery. But you haven't fixed it. He said, however. Uh, he said, however. a lot of people who have that same injury, and and I, I and I agree with them, they don't do anything. Is it is it, if you're having any trouble with the strength in your left arm? I said, nope. He said. It just looks funny. He said, let it ride. Just so now point. you so said it'll heal back together what's left of it. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, instead of two steps, you got one step, bicep. <laughs> now that I'm and you have the perfect icebreaker for <laughs> any gathering of people. Well, if you ever do start gathering, if with you people, get two you know, more of those, you can go get in the circus. So I didn't go to a local surgeon or nothing. I just looked at it, <laughs> sent the picture in. Do you need to tie this back together or what do you think? You know, if I was a kid. He said, let it ride. I said, let it ride. I'm if fine. I was a kid, this would be the perfect thing to do at show and tell. I would bring you up there. You you would show it yeah. and then tell the story. It'd yeah, be right. interesting. It would be very interesting. So yesterday I'm practicing my chipping and pitching because I don't really care if I win the tournament at this point, but I don't want to embarrass myself. That's the kind of golfer I am. I just don't. Because people multiple duffs are embarrassing. Look, when you look like me and you go play at the establishment where everybody talks like this, mm. you have to have your shirt tucked in one hundred percent of the time. But when you look like I do, I stand out, <laughs> and people are like, "That must be that Duck Dynasty guy." Well, then they're watching every or who, swing, or who let him in. Yeah, yeah. And uh, well, they either they know who you are or they find out quickly, <laughs> and so. Uh, so I'm at that stage. So Willie has his own little golf course. You know, the Lord has blessed him mightily. And he basically made a synthetic golf course, which is pretty cool. It's really cool. And so I was over there practicing, and I'm like 20 minutes in. I'm just kind of chipping around, you know. And here I hear a side-by-side, -side, you know, four-wheeler come out there on his – what would you call it? His estate. Because it goes. I mean, he's got a pond just stuffed Stock with. Stock full of crappie and 12-pound yeah. Florida bass. Everything you can, like, imagine to do with some property <laughs> in town, he's done it. And so, which I've already, I've caught all the crappie, so I told him, you know, <laughs> let's buy some more. I'll, I'll split it with you since <laughs> I caught them all. Because you can't do the ones that reproduce because – then they don't get big. So you have to. That's what they say. That's so, what they say. Who knows? So anyway, here comes this guy, and I'm like, well, it must be nice, you know. I mean, Willie's got another worker because he's got a lot of people that's all the time working out there. Yeah, yeah. And this guy. always a project. Yeah, he pulled up. It's kind of an awkward moment. I kind of nodded, you know, but he didn't nod. And uh, he started picking up limbs. I started walking over there because I thought, who is this, you know. And uh, – so I was like, boy, it must be nice. I mean, Willie, he's just, he's hiring people just to ride around his property and pick <laughs> up sticks. Yeah. And so about, I guess, 10 minutes went on. I was practicing, picking up sticks, and I got I hit a ball over there, almost hit him. You know, I hit a shank. I was going to say, and that's uh, one you're trying yeah. to correct. Why do you so, holler when you, that happens? Four, four. But I just four. I hit it, and it was too late. Uh, he was too close to me. So I'll go there close, and I'm like, it hit me. I thought... I know who this is. It's Willie. <laughs> I said, Willie? And he went, yeah. I said, I did not recognize you. I didn't either. He cut his all his hair off. I didn't recognize him either. He didn't I mean, say, Dad, he said, he told me he came in, he sat down, he didn't say anything. He was going to get Dad's reaction. And Dad looked over. Willie said on the couch, Dad's watching Fox. And Dad looks over and he gave him the nod, which is the. Which is, I don't know you. I don't know you. Welcome. Uh, he so, sat down. I said, I wonder who this dude is. <laughs> and and said, then he came out like he owned the joint. <laughs> <laughs> and I then th I thought he was Gary Glenn Osborne. Willie said sight. Willie said there was like this awkward pause and Willie was just waiting. And then dad said, What what you got what you got going on? You know, he then he yeah. waited till he engaged him. So Willie started talking and then dad's like, Will, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> I had the same problem. I was like, Well, why were you so brief? Why did you not say anything? And he's like, 
Well, I didn't know we had to, you know, exchange <laughs> pleasantries, pleasantries or whatever when you're <laughs> in my really yard. It changed the way he looked a lot. Yeah, but it was kind of weird because I was like, well, you need to be more friendly. <laughs> I mean, this guy, it was way more awkward than it should have been because I was like, who is this hand? <laughs> Right, and what's he doing on one of Willie's new four wheelers? Is what I thought because I had never mm. seen that wheeler. So yeah, I was yeah. like, "This guy brought his own wheeler." I mean, he's picking up sticks. <laughs> no, nope, it's Willie with a haircut. Well, I guess it. But you knew he had a haircut. I did not recognize. I did. I I saw a picture, but it's it, like I knew he had a haircut didn't. from the social media. But then I go over to his house. But I, it, I mean, it still looked like him. I mean, it did look. Different. I had no idea it was him. Yeah. None for ten minutes. Right. I got over there close, and I just something about his mannerisms. I thought, "Is that Willie?" <laughs> I guess he's lost a little weight too. Uh, he's, I, he's I mean, he careful. lost thirty pounds worth of hair. <laughs> but well, just, plus he took his beard. It, it's, I told him he, it looks like a garden gnome. Like he he it drew down yeah. to like a little point. Now it's a it's a odd looking beard. But he's oh, got the short. I hair. wouldn't recommend that. I mean, I know he went from one extreme to whatever it he is now, but he's unrecognizable. But <laughs> well, he told me after you shaved your beard that one thing he'll never do is shave it off because well, yeah. he's like, you know, a lot happens under there from forty to fifty. I'm gonna have to agree with that. I mean, it looked. I just felt really lonely and afraid. <laughs> It was a scary feeling. You know? Could you imagine shaving yours off, Dad? At, at this point, if you just peeled a, it it's off, a, it's a it's a it's a good question. I, you know, I'd give you somebody said, bucks. "Well, why why did you grow I'd whiskers?" Pay. And I man, and I usually say, "It's just doing that on its own." I, yeah, I, I, I agree with that assessment. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, you, do you remember I, with a male hair comes out of their faces? Not so much with females. It's just a fact. So I'm looking at it thinking, surely being a man that thinks God created the heavens and the earth and made us from the dust of the earth, the the male has hair come <laughs> facial hair, and the female does not. There's a few males, Indians, types, uh, tribes, that they don't have any hair on their face. I said, but if he put it there, surely he didn't put it there to be cut off every day. <laughs> well, if you live in the wilderness, you would never. You, I mean, I get you it. You it. live in the wilderness. Oh, you have to so. have it. Yeah. Because, I mean, like, people so don't realize. It will save your life, it, in my humble opinion. Yeah. Well, especially if you were up north in oh, the tundra. Well, Louisiana, you know, there's so many insects. I mean, forget the snakes and alligators. The this things people are. This is a wasp. Oh, I'm with you 100%. I've had more critters get hung up in this with, and that it didn't sting me or bite me me too and i'm like oh. but that may be where that earwig was hiding out to, till he went up in the ear too you never know I've knocked, he may have been I've low written down the I've beard knocked black widow spiders just feel something you know on your neck and then you and you just hit him and when he hits Ooh, the ground you he say, got up in there that'd say, have been oh bad. my goodness black widow and then i stomp him but I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> of course yeah. you do. But, but their whiskers. Oh, I've had the same thing. Me. No, you can't. Like people, because I've had people ask me like if I have fleas, and I'm like, <laughs> no. And they're like, well, how would you know? I was like, because I would feel them crawling on my skin. Because you'd they, be scratching they, them like a dog. Well, does. right. What's interesting I mean, about a beard is there's no doubt it's cooler in the summer, and it's and it's warmer in the winter. So God and His wisdom. Gave you a facial covering. You take the sun beating down on your jaws and the sun just beating down on you. This would have to help. Well, yeah. What do they call them? UV rays? Yeah. This is like is a protection. what is the highest sun protection number? Like, I don't know. The, the highest one that works, I think, is 50. But That was a joke, Al. It's the beard. <laughs> oh, the beard. Just okay. beard. I got you. I guess <laughs> yeah, I missed there's that. There's no number. <laughs> so, I was, so let's take a break. I got a question. So uh, I guess at any era that uh, security systems uh, are important, probably more so now. Crime is skyrocketing in a lot of places, unfortunately, um, in in a lot of big cities around America. So you got to have some way to be able to protect your home. And, uh, you know, we've always kind of had dogs and weapons in the old days. Now we realize that a good camera is really important, you know, to kind of show you what's going on outside your property. And so we got a great company, home security company uh, that sponsors our podcast called Simply Safe. 
And basically, it watches your whole home for you, whether you're in it or not in it. And you can basically order online with a click of a button. You open the box, you place the sensors, you plug it in, you're good to go. So you don't have to have a technician or all these other different things like some of them have. Well, how do they get the cameras up? You put them up. Oh. Yeah, they're simple. They're yeah, easy. They're very easy. That's why they call it Simply oh, Safe. Okay. It was voted the best overall home security of 2020. So there you go. Uh, here's how you get it. Simply Safe, S-I-M-P-L-I, safe.com slash unashamed. You get free shipping. You get a 60-day money-back guarantee uh, just because you tell them you're unashamed. Simplysafe.com slash unashamed and start protecting your home. So, Dad, do you remember, uh, I, as far as I know, we've never talked about this. Do you remember the last time you shaved your beard off completely and why? Because I remember it. I remember I do not remember that. Oh, I remember it. He lost a bet. It, it was a bet with Ray Melton. This is why a- you shouldn't gamble. <laughs> That's right. Which is funny. We've talked about gambling. I've Dad never been it. into gambling. Yeah, well, you bet. Well, you did so here, make a bet. So here was the. I don't. Uh, I think it was. Let me just see if I get this right. right see if I you think did. it was. Uh, we used to have a the the pastor that married me and my wife, Ray Melton. I forgot he did your wedding. He did. Yeah, that's right. And I liked. And it. And this was right around that time. You've been married. Is it thirty yet? Thirty years. Have I been, Al, why are you asking me this live on a uh, podcast? Let I'm me gonna let nineteen ninety when I got married. That's thirty years this year. You oh, better be. I, doing that's some, coming up. That's coming about, up in about a yeah, month. Yeah, you better. I, I pulled a film, looked at my watch that I've never owned. <laughs> is this a big event when you? you know, oh, thirties. Yeah, that's okay. a big one. Well, I'll take some ideas later. Yeah, my yeah. life was too hectic to try to remember the day you were officially <laughs> married. I. Hey, y'all had kind of a yeah, we, weird. We've yeah. given you forgiveness. <laughs> That's over right that from that era years ago. But well, I think what happened was I think Phil wanted to do a neighborhood uh, fish fry. I could be totally wrong, and he didn't think it was a lot of people going to come or something. Do I have this right? I'm not sure about that. I, I think it was I don't, like I don't remember the premise. I just the, remember the bet. the The bet was that the people. We're not going to show up. And Phil was saying, no, that's not going to work. And Ray Melton said, well, i tell you what. If whatever the number was at the people coming to the fish fry to share Jesus, because we've done that many times, use the fish as the draw to share Jesus. Whatever the number was, the bet was if I think – what was what, what did he have? To, I think so, Phil so he, had to shave and wear a suit. He had to shave and wear a suit, Ray suit, and then Ray had to preach in camo. That oh, was the, wear a camouflage because he always, you know, wore the whatever. The I now preacher. know why I don't remember that. <laughs> well, you well, did it. You did it. You had a and moment of weakness. Of course, now this is back just to so the audience will know. So this is thirty years ago, thirty to thirty-two years ago when this happened, and back then you would crop your beard up pretty short. At, for the summer, you know, you just had a normal little small beard. It would get longer during the w- winter, and you would crop it. So it wasn't like it, it would be now if you shaved the whole thing off. So you weren't that many years removed from when you know you had a you know short beard. So you shaved it off and put a suit on. And I'll never forget this. So you came, and still you had been wearing a beard for several years. And came to the church building. Came to church Sunday morning. Ray preached that day in camo. Mass hysteria. It was. Ensued. It is what happened. So all these women are coming up to dad. Now this is, you know, you're, you're still only you're in your forties at this point. This is pre TV show. Pre TV show. So you still, you know, you still had the your your athletic body going on. Now they saw your face, and I just remember some particular older women just fawning all over dad. And I remember dad looking at mom and we were there and saying, I'll never do this again. <laughs> and to your word, you've as we never, sit here today, you've never done it again. It was crazy. a stir. Do you remember that, Jay? Oh, I remember You and story. I were in school. We were in the school of preaching at that time. Yeah, I don't remember the details. I remembered it was over how many people were going to show up, and you were wrong. I'd forgotten that. Because the, the dad cause, lost. Because had- they showed up in mass. Cause, cause Ray was trying to get you to do it. He was like, and you were like, they're not going to show up to that, you know? Oh yeah, they showed up in mass. Well, Melton was, <clears throat> he was a really good storyteller preacher. Old Crosby, Steels, and Nash had it down. <laughs> that old rock and roller group. You know, he he said he sings a song. I thought about it the other day. I started to shave my beard. He said, I don't know why, but 
but it was a big deal with him. <laughs> Does he shave his whiskers or not? He chose, like, nah, I don't guess I will. <laughs> but he almost, he was thinking if I shave my beard, I'll be mainstream and I don't want to be there, so. Is it weird that every other conversation we have, you find a song that I've never heard of <laughs> or a movie. in my life? <laughs> you want you want you want part of the '60s, my son. <laughs> well, but I've you know. I'm, I'm glad you music. weren't, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard enough for to survive. You escaped that, that Jace. Where are we headed today? With that, we're, that was it. Where are we headed with we're the done. conversation? <laughs> Yeah, we talked about beers. Boy, everybody loved that part. <laughs> they do love that part. They love to hear our, hear our banter. I hear from them all the time. So uh, we had a few questions today, <clears throat> um, to, and I thought this was a good one that James sent us. And so we get a lot of biblical questions, so when I get one that's non-biblical, I like to share it. Uh, he said, uh, if y'all only had one shotgun to hunt with for the rest of your lives, what kind would you pick? Well, that's a trap question. I'll tell you this: <laughs> Who's our sponsor now? On the show? <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to. Who's paying? I don't want to stir the, the pot. Whoever you know sponsors, I don't know. But I'm going to answer truthfully and honestly after I say this. Actually, I wanted you, to talk about you, that. You know the what Phil was a brownie man for years, just because that's what he had. And uh, when we started doing the Duck Commander videos. You know the the actual duck hunts. What started us to be on TV was a commercial, and That's right. Benelli, you know, became our sponsor. Not because we wanted to leave Browning. They just they said we no longer you know thank you. We no longer need your services, which right. is kind of how it goes when you have sponsors and sure. for videos and all. So Benelli, I think it was one of the funniest moments ever because they wanted to do a commercial. Because they really liked our videos. And they said, we want to do a commercial. Would y'all do it for Benelli? And we'll give you whatever money for your vid- to help you do your video. And look, it was not big money. No, you know? it wasn't back then. Everybody's like, oh, you got I Benelli. I think we were more excited about getting the Benelli shotgun. Oh, that, you're you're doing it to get the shotgun. Because, I mean, they're proud of they it. They have a high dollar. Yeah, high yeah. Dollar, but it's a great gun. So they all come down. This is before any of us has ever seen a TV crew or people. And so here's a little, a small crew. Which it looked big to me back then. It was three about or four, four or five. Yeah, three yeah. or four people, and they got some cameras. And the guy who leaded it, who became known as the Marine, uh, he was like getting out. They had, you know, sheets of paper and with dialogue. And Phil was just standing there. He kept saying, Y'all ready? Y'all ready? And they were like, Yeah, we'll be right with you, Phil. I mean, they were like, No, I think if he says this, we'll do this three times. Phil said, Y'all ready? Y'all ready? <laughs> And it, and everybody kept talking, and finally, but the, tell, the, tell the them Marine, the premise. Well, they they were they were going to say what is the the best shotgun, and they wanted him yeah. to. They were looking to, at some catchy lines or yeah, phrases to yeah. promote their. They best were looking shotgun. for the hook. They said, "We got a hook. If we if he says this about it, but what about it?" Yeah. They're all arguing about what they want me to say. That's right, and so which is what TV people do. Oh yeah. And Phil said, "Y'all ready? I got it." And it was like, "Well, you got what?" It was like, I got the line. You can save all that crap. <laughs> <laughs> and so the which Marine. Which is kind of how the way we filmed that. The Marine, now. to his credit, which is why he became one of the producers of the show. That's right. He said, hey, he, he kind of jumped on the crew. He said, hey, turn the camera on and shut your mouths and let's hear what he's got to say. <laughs> and so they turned the cameras on. And Phil said, the best shotgun is one that goes boom, boom, boom. And it was like a weird <laughs> silence. silence. <laughs> and then they all kind of chuckled. Yeah. And Phil said, that'll do it. And so like start getting his mic off, you know. <laughs> and the Marine said, you know what? I think he's right. And when he said that, the look on the crew's faces were like, are you crazy? Are you insane? We've but set it, this whole thing up, brought all these people yeah, here. But he was right. It was it was a great line, and they used that was the line. Oh, they used it was their hook. The so what t- I was saying, if you analyze it, is you want it to function. Yeah, right. In boom, a creative boom, way. Boom. Right. That's right. I yeah. said it in a way where they're like, "Well, what do you mean?" 
I said, it will fire when you pull the trigger. Right. Because shotguns have habits of hanging up. Oh, yeah. Because most people, when they do a commercial, they're like, hi, guys, use this Benelli Super Black Eagle 3. It's great for functionality. Well, people, they quit listening. When he went, hi, guys, they right. gone. That's right. They, they own the port. But if you can say something that makes people think that's not on the nose, which, granted, is why we started doing a TV, because the Marine, he thought – Huh, that was kind of clever. We need to get these guys a TV show. And so that introduced Benelli Presents Duck Commander. Commander. Let's, uh, let's take another break. So I went through about a three year period on my life where I was having this dream that I was on a pirate ship. And I would wake up, you know, every morning just surprised that I was alive. Did you have like seasickness too, or no? Okay. Here's here's the backstory. I had bought a water bed because uh-huh. I mm. thought that might spruce up the late night activity. <laughs> the problem was I woke up every day doing battle with uh, you know pirates of the Caribbean, <laughs> Blackbeard. <laughs> yeah, it was like it was causing too much stress, and I, <laughs> I said, you know what. <laughs> If you don't think sleeping on a bed affects your daily life, go get a water bed for about three years. I mean, you're walking around. <laughs> Just, Phil, you wake up in the middle of the night trying to oh, yeah, fight yeah. people too, don't yeah, you? Yeah, and I'm not on a water bed. Oh, no, boy. <laughs> so, so, so I didn't know that, Jace, but it yeah. made perfect sense. That like our, deep confessions from my past. <laughs> that our good friends at Helix Sleep – uh, has sent you a mattress because we got to get you yeah, off the ocean. We got to we got to get you on a bed. You want to wake up thinking you were just sleeping <laughs> in you know some field of daisies. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's right. So Jace went. So look, here's what happened. If you if you don't want to get on the pirate ship, you want a good mattress. HelixSleep dot com slash unashamed. You go to their website. You take the two minute sleep quiz, which you did, Jay's. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a ten, and that basically they know what you like: firm, soft, whatever. So you have a ten year warranty. Uh, you get to try it out for a hundred nights, risk free. I don't even, have you had yours a hundred nights, a third of a year. I don't know if you've had it. That not, long. I hadn't had it that long, but we're getting there. But uh, and and it's mostly been slept on by Cole. And I asked him about it the other day, and he said he loved it. So I was like, "Wow, yeah. thumbs up!" For oh, he looked very well rested. He did. Yeah. I mean, I was no pirates, not, no problem. So Helix is offering up to two hundred dollars off all mattresses ordered and two free pillows for our listeners if you go to helixsleep dot com slash unashamed. So it's helixsleep dot com slash unashamed. Two hundred bucks off, two free pillows, and you won't have to fight pirates. Yeah, you're exactly right. The show, that first show we did was born out of that commercial. But tell them about right. the commercial. The commercial that I don't know if this was connected to that line, but the one where the the fast food, the setup of the oh, fast yeah. food. But we that, did that. that I was, don't think that was as successful, uh, but <laughs> we did another commercial later on. But once again, it got too set up. Yeah. And uh, we were ordering a Happy Meal, and it was <laughs> – it was a really weird commercial. Well, it was we like were, it was like what if a what if a fast food place sold shotguns? Yeah, so that's it was what the it was. premise. So you come through the drive through, and and this was when Willie Boss Hall. This is where that was born out of that because yeah. he had a big old white Cadillac with the Longhorns out of the front of it. He's in the white suit and the white mm-hmm. hat, and y'all are all stacked in there, Godwin and y'all inside. Yeah, we in, looked like Sha Na Na because it was. <laughs> but they were pretty good commercials. Well, they were, and so they pulled well, up, you know. And it, the the one that boom, 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 though, that kind of went viral before things went viral. Yeah, that was a and little so, more viral. Yeah, it was. And so to answer the question, I mean, that is the best. You know, if, if a gun is functional, to be honest, okay, what, 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 what do you need? Right. I mean, my personal favorite is this the new – Benelli Super Black Eagle Three. They basically made an improvement. It is an outstanding shotgun. Oh, out. Now look, are they proud of it? Yes, it's expensive. It costs more than my first truck. Yeah, <laughs> which my truck, I only paid a thousand dollars for it. So I don't want to scare you. I was but, say, I don't. What, but still, what's every time I think about Benelli and Beretta shotguns, I think of the Italians. And what can I say? Viva Italia, I guess you would say. <laughs> because somewhere over there in the one of them cubby holes, 
in Italy, <laughs> there are some there are some very shrewd gunsmiths. I've, I've, I'm on record as saying, ever since the Roman Empire failed and all that, you know, the Italians made a comeback with shotguns and pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> If I had a mic, I'd drop it. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you wind up with a boom, boom, boom right there. Yeah, the, that, that, that should it. be the tagline of this episode. The Italians may Never come rule back. out the Italians. The they shotguns and shotguns. pizzas. And pizzas. What's so funny is, uh, you know, when, back when we were doing <laughs> duck hunt videos and back when I used to care about what people said on social media and the internet, you know, I would read some guy that, boy. By the way, how how long did it take you to get over that? Because I never participated in that particular (laughs) conduct, listen to what somebody said on the internet and see if I'm mad or not. (laughs) Two weeks. So how long did, two (laughs) Two weeks? weeks. (laughs) Two weeks, I thought, you know what, these people are. You're a wise man. (laughs) You're a wise man. (laughs) This is, this is crap. But, uh, I mean, I'm not going to determine my value over what somebody says or has an opinion in a virtual world that they could be anybody and they have no uh, accountability. You know, everybody's tough when they're on a computer a million miles away. Yeah. So that's why, though, I the, think the Internet is, is solid proof that the Bible is true because the acts of the sinful nature are obvious in that is hatred. You see that in, in America, discord. Jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness. Galatians five twenty two. But also, I will say this: all you're doing is seeing people. Yeah, you're just seeing it. It was going on. You didn't have to have the That's internet. Correct. Where are or, there where there are people, there is simple behavior. You're, you're just that. seeing it now, quickly in yeah. one minute. But what I was going to say so is, my question I asked me one time is why listen to it, and I decided. Not to listen to it. Well, that's fine. But you are it. doing a. You are now having a conversation that's on there, and people listen to it. So I'm. For but, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience. That's right. We give the other side. But sure. I wanted to say this. A lot of people. What 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 I would read is like, boy, Duck Commander sold out. You know, they went from Browning to yeah. Benelli, and I'm like, what? No, they they fired us. For you know, they asked, they picked our brains. They said, what do y'all think? We did a few commercials, and then they're like, "Thank you." That's so, it. So we're like, so here comes another one. Right. I hope you they know. had a little bounce in sales. Who yeah. knows? Who knows? So Benelli comes along, and they're like, "Hey, hey guys, what do y'all think?" So we're like, "Hey, we're in with Benelli." And like I said, mainly it was for the actual guns, which to us was priceless. Well, to me, it's kind of like yes, a two phase. My, my nostalgia as a kid is to Browning because. That's we had our old Browning shotguns and still have a lot of them. You know they're mechanized. You know a lot of them are worn out, but they were passed down from grandpa to you yep. to us. And you know what's weird out is like when I go every once in a while I'll go to the Vegas show where all the hunters the shot show. Yeah, when I, I see the, the, I haven't been to that in twenty uh, years. How is when it now? I see the people that we were with with Browning? Oh hey, it's big hugs. Oh, yeah, it? yeah, you know yeah. it's not. That's what I'm saying. It's the customer loses that, yeah. and that they're like, "Oh, it's just a business decision." We, right. we, you know, we let them shoot some of our guns. We're all it friends. was great, and then we moved on. You know, in yeah. fact, to tell, to tell you that's true, we've actually been with Benelli twice. Right. So, so not too long ago, uh, they've started Browning has started reproducing some of the old guns that I love, the A5 and some of those in the newer, you know, gas operated model. By the way, I, I recommended to them Browning Arms. What you just said, I said you need to build an A5. Don't mm-hmm. do away with the A5. That's right. It was all machine steel. Right. Well, the old the old tool and die people got older, and uh, well, plus they just left those. And it's Belgium got, it's got and to where well, it was right. very expensive to build. Well, right. So and they said we're going to do away with it. I said don't do that. I said whatever you do. I said that's your that's your. Well, and to show you that... I that, said, you're heading in the wrong way. Well, they said, made a replica of it. They I made said, it build an A5-like shotgun instead of the barrel recoil. I said, have you, you have your spring back in the stock, like Benelli and all of them. I said, put your spring back in the back. You know, I, I don't forgot the, the first guy's name, Mr. Browning, but he figured out that barrel recoil. But <laughs> yeah. I told him, I said, put your spring in the back like like right. like Benelli and them do. I said, but at least make it look like well, an old A5, I said, and you'll do a lot better. Well, well they did. a decade went by, 
and they didn't take me up on it. But after about a decade, somebody must have stood up one time and said, I think maybe that old boy <laughs> had something there. No, he so probably they, just waited for them to forget. They then, built an A5 it was his, his idea, that's right. And they sent me one I'm down here. Well, no, that's what I was going to tell. So I run across one of the guys that we used to do business with, and uh, – and I had seen the shotgun. I said, man, I'm so excited. That's, I mean, that's my all-time favorite gun is my original A5. Yep. And he was like, well, let me send you a few. And I was like, yeah, well, sure. <laughs> you know, I mean, he knew we were with Benelli. Oh. So he sent me a handful of them, and that's why we have one. But it's – so there's a great relationship. But Benelli is kind of the new – one because we've used we've been using theirs and there's they're I like, good guns. I they're, like they're both good guns. I still like the M2 is my favorite out of those. Yeah, guns. I have M2. It's a so really we're, really we're good all shot. happy. So I hope that answered your question. So that and by the way, somebody else has we usually use twelve gauges. So I use a twenty. Somebody asked me what uh, gauge shot. I mean, we have you. different. I have every gauge. Yeah, but you I mostly think. shoot a twelve. Yeah, I do. But I now mean, you, what about I'm the saying. the year you shot the ten gauge? Off? I got off the ten gauge <laughs> due to injuries. <laughs> I mean, that thing, stomp a mud hole in I, it. they probably come up with a way for where it not to kick so hard. But I'm going to tell you, that's literally like getting hit by a Tyson <laughs> 25 times a day. Yeah, if you right. shoot a, I when mean, your shoulder is blue the next day. You can say, well, it's okay. just kawam. And then you got to gather yourself. Yeah. Kawam. <laughs> gather yourself. We opted to be better at duck calling, call them in closer. Yeah. Size yeah. shooting a 28 gauge now, which is basically a pop gun, but he which claims he kills just, everything. Yeah. Letting him do something and feel like he's involved. You, you got to remember, a whole DVD was devoted to Sai, the art of <laughs> claiming ducks. ducks. That's right. Is he's, it, he's, he and he's alone all. on the title. That's an interesting one. All right, let's take another break. So a lot of people have been working from home. Uh, our guys did Zach for our production company. Everybody yeah. was kind of still are still are. So and and. Fortunately, it's something you can do a lot of times with your job. It involves computer. Unfortunately, one of the things that's happened that kind of driving up, the more people that are out there on the Internet, the more stuff that's going online, is that uh, there's some cyber crime uh, that's spiking as well. No. In oh, our yeah. world. <laughs> Always the bad guys. Mischief on the Internet, Bad Phil. guys on the Internet, Dad. Those trying to steal your house. We're good guys, but but they're bad guys. So home title theft is what we're talking about. Basically, they target people's homes because if your home title is typically somewhere in the cyber world, or as Dad would say, computer land. And so a lot of times it's unprotected. And these guys find their way to do it. They put their name on it or borrow money against it. And all of a sudden, some person, they show up at somebody's house and they evict them. It's happened to people, which is really sad and scary. So home title lock puts a virtual barrier around your home's title. That's what we want. So you protect your home. You can go to hometitlelock.com. You register your address. You got to make sure that you still have your home. Use the code FEEL, and you get 30 days of free protection to help you through the crisis. So that's code FEEL at HomeTitleLock.com. All right, so uh, here's the next question I had. I got, we'll save uh, this other one because it's a little more in-depth. But uh, this, I thought this was interesting. I don't, I don't remember who sent it, but someone asked me, why would Joshua clear the promised land of all the, you know, heathens and quote, you know, all the people that were there, if the people were going to come in and, you know, the Israelites would come in and then they would all wind up doing the same thing. Why would God just clear out the other ones if they're going to come in and turn out doing the exact same Man, thing? I Which, feel like I've just, I've just sat down to the middle of a story. <laughs> I'm not even familiar with this story. <laughs> well, so. let me set it up. So, this is what I told. I actually responded to him, but so this is so God promised the land of Canaan to Abraham. He was like, you know, this this is the land I'm going to give you. And so he, you remember, Abraham leaves in Genesis 12, and so he starts on his trek. Well, he never, you know, he didn't. They were still warring around. You know, it wasn't all under control until way after the Israelites came out. So this is like 400 years later. And so Joshua gets there with the second generation of slaves because all the others died out in the desert and basically started at Jericho and just went through and toppled the whole country. But God gave it to him. He said, clear them out. Don't leave any of them there. I don't want any false gods left in here. You clean everything out. Everybody that's in there, it needs to be gone. And so what's his question? So his question is, but then, so what happens is they get in there, 
everything's starting out great. Everybody loves Joshua, loves God. And then we just go about three or four generations and they become the people that were there. They started following, you know, the bales and all the different deals. So that they sounds be- like a democratic republic once upon exactly a time right. that uh, is not but 244 years old. And for some strange reason, they've deserted God. That's right. And, d- and decide that communism is a good. Uh, Your story is a perfect example exactly. of what men do, including now. So it's but quite- I, I always view it from a macro. I mean, I'm like, no matter what happened in the Old Testament, there's a need for Jesus to offer redemption and resurrection. Well, yeah. It, well, the answer to the question is, but it's a it's a it's a good question in the sense of you know it has implications. But you got to look at it like this: when you try to look at it and say, "Why would God do this?" Immediately, you're entering a char- uh, waters that are not good for human beings. You, yeah, you see, can never figure. Yeah. Out, you know what I'm saying? Because you're, each human still has the ability to choose exactly That's God it. or not. That's exactly mm-hmm. right. So from God, God knows that. Somebody said, "Well, why did he do it if he knew they were going to sin? I mean, if he knew they were going to rebel again, have there ever been a group of human beings who didn't start sinning?" Well, you remember we had rebelling? a question a few podcasts ago where it says, "Why would God even make us?" If well, he knew right. we were going to sin. So and it's I, the same concept. You can't put yourself in God's place to try to figure something like that out. The hall of faith, as you notice in the book of Hebrews, Al, it's not a very long read. <laughs> yeah. It's you one know, chapter. You know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, the list hey. was not lengthy. But they had That's it more got... difficult than we do because they had no grace and they had no resurrection. They were just having to deduct all this. I mean, trust me, if I'd have been in the Old Testament, I'd probably been out too. Well, because oh, you're like, do what now? Do you remember you, we talked well, about Well, you have spoken the truth, my son, because <laughs> everyone who is under the law is under a curse. Yeah. You're like, it's, uh, it's tough when, you, when you're going with, with the law. Can you cause... imagine being in a civilization where there's absolutely no hope? I'm, now, people and look one at One violation us, condemns. Yeah, well, you just summed up what non believers think right because it's hopeless i mean we we've figured this out you know someone shared it with us and we're like oh i don't have to be miserable there i actually can have a purpose i know where i came from i know what my purpose is and i for sure know where i'm headed right but people without that they're just trying to figure out if there's a god and if there is what is his plan here because that's why they come up with the same question. Well, how come all this bad stuff's going on if there's a, there's a God? Yeah, Which should. is basically where this kind of question is coming from because right. it's not making sense. But you got to understand, two, there's two simple answers. One is God made a promise to Abraham this was going to happen. So that's the first reason it happened. One thing you can count on God, when there's a promise made in the Scriptures, mm-hmm. it's going to happen. That is well, we correct. talked about that exactly. on a previous one because that doesn't seem like a big deal to us. But you, if you think about eternity, you can't have a being who says, okay, if you, you know, I'm going to come down there, die for you, save you, and I'm going to save you forever. You can't have a being who is capable of going back on his word because we're talking about eternity here. Because most people tend to think, well, we get up there for a few thousand years, and then this all starts again because, you know, he changes his mind <laughs> and— well, I mean, that's just the way we think because we can't relate to eternity. That's right. So we start saying, well, why did he do our, this? Our, our final word on everything. It, we find that difficult. Humans yeah. don't like the final word. So he made a point that when I say something, it is impossible for that not to be true. Now, you may not see it or understand it, but and you may be, it's impossible for it not to to be true. And it may be generations before you see it. The other point I would make to this is, and as one who studied the Old, Test- Old Testament extensively, is that even throughout that era, the judges, which is right after that, and it was bad. I mean, there was a lot of lawlessness. You go all the way through Israel's history, one principle is always there, and it actually started back at Noah. There's always a remnant of the godly. No matter how bad the society gets, no matter how much stuff there's. That is true. Because you remember Elijah got to the point where he was like, I'm the only one left. And so you might as well just take me because we're done here. And then you remember what he told him. He's like, no, I still got 7,000. But think about that out of a whole nation. That wasn't many. 
He said, I still got 7,000 waiting on you. That's why I've been saying here lately, everybody needs to remember, I'm guessing it at a million, give or take a few, who are in the streets with all this nonsense <clears throat> and all this vile filth and sinful behavior. But that leaves, there's roughly 325 million of us, whatever that number is, but that leaves 324 million. Right. What's their thinking? When they're viewing what we're all viewing in modern day, all this protesting and riots and fires and burning and murders, you're like, what in the world? You you would tend to say the whole thing is, is, is collapsing. But you need to remember there's 324 million that are watching the million, and they have a decision to make. Do I join that or do I steer clear of that, live by faith? I know this, all... This is uh, Galatians 3, verse 10. All, that's everybody, all who rely on observing the law are under a curse, for it is written, cursed is everyone. Here's all you have to do, ladies and gentlemen. Cursed is everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law. All you have to do is be sin free. Never make a mistake. And you're good. If not, one little mistake, you're under a curse. Death. Death. In that context, when Jesus shows up and says, I will deliver you and nail the law to the cross, what's amazing is there are a lot of people out there now that are still saying, we're under the law of Moses. Right. That's the last place you want to be. That's you right. just don't want to be there. Well, let's, uh, let's take one last break. That was actually the last question was about that. Dad. The question was from Zacharias, how does when Matthew 5, when Jesus said, do not think I have come to abolish the law or the prophets, I've come not come to abolish but to fulfill them. Yep. That what did he mean by that? Because it sounds like, from his perspective, it sounds like that the law is good. Jesus didn't say, you know, I came here to abolish it, to fulfill it. So does law continue on? into Christianity. So that's kind of the, you know, he has several questions underneath it, but that's kind of his gist. So how did Christ fulfill the law? Uh, He did something that the human race has never done. Uh, He kept it. (laughs) He kept it, which meant he loved perfectly, never makes a mistake, turns around and dies. Before this faith came, that's Jesus and his death, burial, and resurrection. We were held prisoners by the law. I'm quoting Galatians 3, verse 23, ladies and gentlemen. Locked up until faith should be revealed. Who's going to deliver us from the law that we never kept? So the law was put in charge. Here's the purpose. To lead us to Christ that he might, we might be justified by faith. Now that faith has come. We are no longer under the supervision of the law. I don't know how much clearer you can make it out. Well, and the because the point is, it's not the Paul said the law is good and holy. There's nothing wrong with the law. What was wrong was we couldn't keep the law. That is it. So the failure was not in the standard. The failure is in the people. So that what? that sometimes people misunderstand that because it sounds like we're well, you're saying law is bad. No, law. Paul said law is good. Law is holy. Sure. There's nothing wrong with the law because God came up with it. I think what, what people are missing is that in what we say about the law, we're not under law. He canceled the code. He nailed it to the cross. Nailed it to the cross. So somebody reads, well, he fulfilled it. What does that mean? What you got to remember is when we talk about we're not under law, well, yeah, we're under we're under laws, but we're not under law as the motivation for why we do what we do. You know, when you quote Romans 12, in view of God's mercy, offer your bodies as living sacrifices. So I think you got to, that's a factor in this is that, okay, you can make a point about the law is still here because people are breaking it. Right. And because people say, well, he didn't. How can there not be a law if people are still? Breaking it. So technically, oh, yeah, people are living under law. Look, I'll tell you this right now. There's a lot of church buildings that they're living under law. That's 
obvious because you break <laughs> one of the rules and you'll find yourself in a closed door meeting being yep. tongue lashed. So yep. I've heard. Yep. And so I think that's the one thing is that it's not that won't. The reason you read that if you only break one of them, then you're guilty of breaking all of it is if you try to live your life trying to keep the law as a basis for righteousness. Or even a few of them. Yeah. You're going to be disappointed. That's why you're disappointed. And so you say, you know what? I'm going to love Jesus because he fulfilled the law, which is all that means is he kept it and died for those who didn't. That's it. There's the fulfillment. So you say, well, why do I go technically keep the law? Because I love Jesus. Right. I mean, there's some things that are right and wrong, and I'm doing the ones that are right only because I love Jesus. Therefore... There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life, it dispenses justice, but it's through your faith right. in Jesus, as, as, as the old Jace is saying. The law of the spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. What the law was powerless to do, in that it was weakened by the sinful nature. You're right, Al. Nothing wrong with the code. No, the code's fine. But there's a whole lot of wrong with us. <laughs> right. So it was weakened by the sinful nature. Here's what God did. God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful man. Look, he was a human. So you're like, well, how'd he do with the law? He kept it. Yeah. He kept it. Every jot and tittle. He... The likeness is of it to be a sin offering, Jesus. And so he condemned sin and sinful man in order that the righteous requirements of the law, which is 100% flawless obedience, might be fully met in us because he kept it. It is met in us through our faith in him. It's given to us. It was a wonderful thing that God did through Jesus Christ That's right. regarding the law. Because we don't live according to the sinful nature, but according to the Spirit. We simply trust God and try, and you say, well, how will I know the results of people who are not under the law? How would I spot them? See if they love, see if they're full of joy, see if they bring peace, love, joy, peace, patient, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. You said those are the ones who live by the Spirit right, right. there. I, yeah. I want to say this. I know we got to go, but you know, he that question came from the Sermon on the Mount, and I think the biggest yawner class I ever did was what I'm fixed to share with you in less than a minute because people thought, what? They yawned that, on you, Jace? Didn't get it. <laughs> because I went to the Sermon on the Mount to try to share with them that we're not under law. Well, they're like, and he goes through all these situations. You say you're not an adulterer, but I tell you, you can't even think about you know a woman in that way. They're like, well, that seems contrary. And and my point was that Jesus's whole point was you're not going to keep the law because even if you think you do, I know what's going on in secret, and you're not keeping the law. So he comes down to the last verse in, on that in chapter five, and it says, "Be perfect, therefore." Is, your heavenly Father is perfect. It's a really controversial verse because nobody in the religious world wants to tackle that. They're like, be perfect. Do that. <laughs> well, we can't do that. So, but which, they're, which missing, the point. <laughs> they're missing the point that it's as your heavenly Father. He was introducing this idea of a relationship. Right. He was getting off the law onto as you look at the Father, that's your motivation. Because trust me, you're not going to be perfect. But some of these people, they're like, no, it says be perfect. Well, if it says that, we're all screwed. Yep. Because <laughs> <laughs> that ain't going to happen. And so then is... people are like, oh, and then he spends the next chapter talking about, I see what's going on in secret, which the point is, he knows your heart. Right. And if you're trying to take a code and implement it in your life and be good, you're going to be very disappointed, and you're probably not going to make it. Yep. Which to prove that point, Paul said in, in 2 Corinthians 12, in my weakness is when I made perfect. Remember when he said that, talking about yep. himself? He Which was like, is another well, thing that makes no sense that's to, right. to the legalistic mind. Right, because he was saying, and look, he was the legalist of legalists. But the bottom line is it's not about you, it's about Jesus. And don't fret 
if you're sincerely mistaken. That's why I told you the story. I was 10 feet from my brother, and I'd have bet $10,000 that it wasn't him. <laughs> Guess what? And so was that was his son that didn't know it. We were wrong. <laughs> so when you hear these it types, happens. When it you happens. hear these types of things, they say, maybe I need to get off the code and get more on Jesus. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Thanks for the questions. Keep them coming. So we're so glad you guys were with us today. You can subscribe on iTunes or Spotify or YouTube or Facebook. And be sure and rate us on iTunes so that other people can know about the podcast.